सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली in the bloody ethnic conflict you have women being paraded naked and gang raped by a mob about which the prime minister said that that you know this incident has shamed the country law and order machinery has collapsed the chief minister is looking completely out of death and yet the prime minister won't take any action against him the fact is the bjp has been far too generous with this former congress minister remember he was a minister in the congress led government headed by ibobi singh He had joined the BJP in October 2016, and became Chief Minister just six months later in March 2017. In fact, the fact is, barely eight weeks before he became the Chief Minister, his son had been sentenced to five years of rigorous im- imprisonment for killing a 21-year-old man in a 2011 road rage case. Even after he became the Chief Minister, it was not a smooth sailing. There were troubles. politically allies were not happy in 2020 four bjp mlas resigned from the uh, party its alliance partner the npp withdrew support from the government questioning what they call the chief minister's one man style of functioning the bjp high command backed the chief minister then and brokered peace prime minister modi continues to back biren singh even now speaking outside parliament last thursday the pm looked hurt and angry when he spoke about the barbaric incident of the two cookie women paraded naked and raped in manipur he spoke about the country being shamed by this but there was nothing about the biren singh led government not even a word of advice or caution the prime minister rather looked upset with the opposition parties i mean did they expect him to remind the manipur cm of rajdhar it was the manipur police who had handed over the two women to the mob who paraded them naked and raped them as the indian express reported but going by bjp leaders logic the manipur cm need not have moral compunction or shame any more than any counterparts in other states because as the pm suggested on thursday crimes happen against women in other states too and he named congress rule rajasthan and chatisgarh that brings us to the question as to why pm modi is so determined to defend cm biren singh there are four reasons for this first as you know nobody can force pm modi to do anything if opposition parties are demanding singh's resignation they are in fact only helping him just as they helped railway minister ashwini vaishnav after that odisha uh, train tragedy one of the worst rail accidents in recent times the opposition demanded his resignation and then we knew nothing was going to happen if the opposition demands something the government does not yield come what may that has been the bjp's approach since 2014 so that's the first reason the second reason is that for the bjp misgovernance is no reason for changing chief ministers well they are replaced at will when it's politically expedient ahead of elections you remember uh, so many of them anandimen anandimen patel vijay rupani in gujarat trivendra singh rawat and tirath singh rawat in uttarakhand yadurappa in karnataka and biplav dev in tripura they were all removed but not because misgovernance it was because it was politically expedient that was that is the second reason third reason next assembly election in manipur is 4 years away and public memory is short and the bjp knows that You remember BJP led governments at the center in the states were found so wanting in action during the second wave of COVID-19 that party MPs and MLAs were going public with their grouses they were saying that they were not able to visit villages because the people were so angry and i am putting a link of a column that i had written about this then 
Once the ferocity of the second wave subsided, with thousands dead, people were back to hailing PM Modi for vaccination and free food grains. So the violence in Manipur will also pass and everyone will forget Biren Singh's follies. Or so the BJP strategists seem to be thinking. Fourth reason for not removing Biren Singh? He is too valuable to be dumped. He led the BJP to secure a majority in the state assembly in 2022 for the first time on its own in Manipur. He enjoyed the support of Hindu Maitais, the BJP's core vote bank in the state. They constitute about 53% of the population. Besides, amid this chaos in Manipur, it's not easy to pick a BJP MLA who can replace Singh and fix things quickly. Leadership change may only compound the situation. That may be the apprehension of the government or the BJP leadership. There is also a grudging realization in the BJP that it is not entirely his fault if the situation is deteriorating. The fact is, Centre has virtually taken over things in Manipur, although it maintains ambiguity about the invocation of Article 355. On the 5th of May, then Manipur DGP P. Uh, Dongal told reporters that the Centre had taken over the state security by invoking Article 355 which enjoins upon the center a duty to protect the state from external aggression or internal disturbances. After whatever DGP said, other state officials later denied it and the Union Home Ministry has been ambivalent about it. So even today, there is no clarity whether Article 355 was invoked or not. We just have the former DGP's statement and that's about it. Other officials maintain it has not been done. That aside, it was the center that got the state government to appoint Kuldeep Singh, a retired IPS officer of West Bengal cadre, who served as CRPF Director General. Uh, he has been appointed the security advisor. Now, Kuldeep Singh is said to enjoy the confidence of Home Minister Amit Shah. Then uh, Tripura cadre IPS officer Rajiv Singh, he was appointed Manipur DGP in place of Dongal, who is a cookie. Now, neither of these two officers, Kuldeep Singh or Rajiv Singh, belongs to Manipur. They have had no previous work experience in the state. These two top officials are uh, in touch di directly with, the, with New Delhi. If they have failed to deliver so far, Biren Singh can't be blamed. Imposition of president's rule is politically fraught. Because if the center fails to restore normalcy quickly, it will put a question mark directly on the Modi government's ability and competence. And that's why you see whenever you talk about imposition of president, so this is one thing that you know you have a BJP government and Indira Gandhi might have dismissed her Congress government in Punjab, but you don't expect the Modi government to do that. Anyway, so these are the four reasons why PM Modi is reluctant to sack Biren Singh. There are however five reasons why PM Modi must sack him. First, if 40-45% of the population, I mean the cookies and other tribes, if they don't trust the chief minister, the situation is unlikely to change unless he goes. The center should not treat this bloody ethnic conflict as a law and order problem. It requires a political healing touch. A chief minister who is seen as partisan can provide this healing touch. Given the crisis of confidence in the local political leadership, it's better for the center to impose president's rule and have a direct dialogue with the warring sides. I was told that, you know, when Amit Shah was in Churachandpur, he had drawn a good response from the Kuki Zomi tribals when he was there. Prime Minister Modi also enjoys the trust of both tribals and non-tribals in Manipur. Therefore, they need to be more proactive and directly involved. The second reason why PM Modi must sack Biren Singh is while the center seems to be waiting for the crisis to dissipate over time, there are no signs of it going away even after 11 weeks. Rather, it threatens to spread to other states in the Northeast. While the Mizoram government is struggling to deal with over 12,000 Kukizomi migrants from Manipur, I mean, who have taken shelter in, uh, uh, shelter in Mizoram, Metes living in the state have started fleeing. 
after the peace accord MNF association an outfit of former Mizo militants after that outfit issued a statement asking Metis to leave quote unquote for their own safety most of these Metis in Mizoram are reportedly from Assam's ba Barak Valley as they head home the Assam government must be wary they are estimated 5 lakh Manipuri origin settlers in Assam earlier in May after that outbreak of violence in Manipur, Meghalaya had witnessed a Kuki Methi clash in Shillong, Northeast Asian ethnic mosaic. And any conflict in one place has the potential to manifest in different forms across the region. That's why the PM must act to put an end to this crisis in Manipur immediately. The third reason why PM Modi must let his Manipur government go is the adverse and political, adverse political and electoral implications. As I mentioned earlier, unless it's politically expedient, necessary, the BJP does not sack its chief ministers. But that's exactly the reason why Biren Singh must go. While the ruling party has resorted to what about to counter the opposition's attack over the Manipur gang rape incident. It seems to be unmindful of its women constituency. Although a series of women-centric uh, schemes and programs like, you know, uh, LPG connections, toilet facilities, Beti Bacha, Beti Padha, free food grains during COVID and Nal Se Jale scheme among others. While these schemes and programs made Prime Minister Modi popular among, among uh, women voters, the effect seems to be wearing off. Post poll and exit poll surveys in the last Himachal Pradesh and Karnataka Assembly elections show how the BJP's support base among women has been shrinking and that of the Congress rising, contributing to the Congress's victory in these two states. Let me give you an example. As, as per CSDS Lokniti uh, post poll survey in 2017 Himachal Assembly election, 48% women voted for the BJP and 41% for the Congress. That was in 2017. In 2022, only 42% women voters went for the BJP. A drop by 6 percentage points. For the Congress, it went up by 4 percentage points. Karnataka witnessed similar trends in the last assembly election. You may argue that it could be because of freebies offered by the Congress. But that's not a good enough argument to dismiss this declining enthusiasm for the BJP among women, women voters. The BJP can also argue that people vote differently in the Lok Sabha and Assembly elections. These arguments aside, the ruling party, the BJP needs to worry about the messages it has been sending to women voters. The BJP has refused to sack Haryana Minister Sandeep Singh while the Haryana police has been probing allegations of sexual harassment against him by a female athlete coach for the last seven months. The BJP's stout defense of its MP, Bridge Bhushan Saran Singh, in the women wrestlers' sexual harassment case was fresh in public memory when the horrendous video from Manipur surfaced. The BJP's what about re over this incident the Manipur incident sounds insensitive and cynical. The party must think whether it's taking Prime Minister Modi's women voters for granted. The fourth reason for the PM to sack Birin Singh is again political. Its implications for the tribal vote bank. Tribals constitute 8.9% of India's population and have a significant presence in the four pole bound states where the BJP has big stakes, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Telangana. Trust the opposition to talk about the BJP's failure to protect tribals in Manipur in the coming assembly elections. Jharkhand CM Hemant Soren has already written to President Draupadi Murmu, drawing her attention to the Manipur incident and saying that, you know, we cannot and must not let our, that is uh, Hemant Soren in his letter, we cannot and must not let our fellow tribal brothers and sisters be treated in this appallingly barbaric way. That's Hemant Soren. 
Travel outfits in Gujarat also organized a band to protest against Manipur developments on Sunday. The Congress was, of course, quick to extend support to it. The BJP can expect the opposition to turn on the heat further if the crisis co- continues. Last but not the least, PM Modi must sack the Bidin Singh government. Because for once, Modi is not looking like the strong and decisive leader the people started voting for from 2014 onwards. He is looking unsure, evasive and clueless about how to solve the crisis in Manipur. That's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching. 